Okay, today I'm going to do an overview of the basic effects that you'll find in Paint.net. Now, Paint.net calls effects what something like Photoshop calls filters. They're basically um, special effects that you can run on the pictures. Paint.net, at least version 3.5, comes with a basic set of effects. I'm going to go through them one at a time to show you how they change each of the pictures. So let's start with the artistic effects. Okay, let's start with the artistic effects. If we choose the ink sketch, you'll see that it makes it look like this was done with an ink pen. And you can adjust the coloring all the way from no coloring up to almost full coloring. Another artistic effect is oil painting. And you have a brush size adjustment and a coarseness adjustment. Now, what's interesting is this actually looks more realistic if the picture is of lower quality. It has something to do with the pixels and the grain of it, but you can see that it definitely changes the picture, puts a different sort of effect on it, kind of like an oil painting. And a pencil sketch, same thing. I actually like the results better when it's a lower quality picture because it, it looks more like it was actually penciled on. This has a little bit more of a grayscale, black and white effect when it's a high quality picture. Okay, blurs. Now each of the blurs has a different result. The fragment blur makes it kind of look like it's uh, the camera was vibrating and you can again adjust the quality on it to have widely different effects looks like one of those pictures taken of a UFO alien or something. The next blur is a Gaussian blur, which is a fairly standard blur for just making a picture kind of fuzzy looking. Next blur would be a motion blur. Kind of does what you would expect. Applies the sort of the feeling of motion on one side of the picture. Makes it look like the individual was running or moving while the picture was taken. And you can adjust the angle and you can adjust the effect of whether it's centered or not. Uh, when I uncheck centered, it, it has a bit more of a feeling of motion in a certain direction depending on which way you aim the angle. Radial blur, you pick a spot on the picture and it, everything blurs in a radius around that, that spot. So if I adjust the quality lower, higher quality would be clearer, lower quality is actually tends to be more blurry. Let's see how this goes. Wow, that's dramatic. I don't think that was what it's supposed to do. Okay. Next blur is the surface blur. I've demonstrated this on a video on how to do touch-ups on human faces and skin. It actually has a pretty dramatic effect on skin. You can use it on other objects as well, but it basically removes the texture of skin. Almost, almost makes it look rubberized, but if you're going for a perfect complexion, like some sort of elf, then it's great. And unfocus does pretty much what you'd expect. Kind of gives it that look of uh, something in the background. So you can apply this to a certain layer that might be in the background and it'll make it look like it was just out of focus when the picture was taken. And th the next one is the zoom blur which focuses on the area where the arrow is everything else kinda looks like it's out of focus and zoomed into that point so it's like it moved and stopped at that point of focus has an interesting effect